Peace and comfort to each and every one of you all. Whether you're new here or whether you've been rocking with me for quite a while. I just want to present to you three reasons why we faint not. Everything that we deal with as humans, all the trials that we go through, everything that try us daily, we need the, the nourishment. We need to be refreshed. First, if you do not know how to get saved, all you have to do is believe in the Jesus works-based salvation or gospel. So what that really means is you hear the sacrifice Jesus made on according to God's will, which is Jesus Christ being the son of God, having no sin, himself, him dying on the cross for our sins, for the sins of the world, who was buried and rose from the dead on the third day. He has given us the gift of eternal life. And we have that now and we have it forever. So if you believe in that Jesus works salvation, you are forever saved. Other words called once saved, always saved. Now, whew, as far as trials, if you are a parent, a caregiver of any, it just, just a human, but really I want to speak to the parents, grandparents, caregivers, guardians, etc., aunties, uncles, cousins, if you care for a younger person. Last night, I decided, oh, I'm tired, let me go to bed. You know, it was like 9.30 approaching 10 o'clock. Normally, I go to bed at midnight. I'm about to prepare to go to sleep. I'm tired, I'm just done. My oldest, a nonverbal autistic child, my oldest starts screaming, screaming, crying. Like he just won't stop. He's just full out having a, a meltdown. And then as I'm, working on helping him to regulate and to calm down. I hear my youngest son wake up like, uh, making sounds and stuff. And I'm like, I heard a I'm like, I know I just ain't here to throw up. And then I hear, mom, I threw up. I'm like, oh my God. So I have these two things going on at once. My middle son, he is knocked out, smoothed out. He ain't wake up. He he didn't pay any attention to the drama. So I'm like, man, like this is going to be a long night being super dramatic. Y'all, after I spoke over my oldest son, like I bind the peace of God and his healing and comfort to be on you to my oldest and telling him, hey, you're going to have a good night. You're going to have a good night. I don't know what's going on with you, but you're going to have a good night. And after I did that with him, he eventually just was asleep. Then my youngest, I helped him out. I did what I needed to do with all of that. And he was sound asleep. What felt like an eternity was really like less than 30 minutes. Everything just seemed so dramatic to me and like escalated and I just couldn't bear it. So I say all of that um, in that story, just to let you know that our afflictions are before a moment. And I, I know some someone may be like, that is not really an affliction. That's something, you know, normal. But if we look into 2 Corinthians chapter 4, if you see it right here, we're starting there. It says, for our light affliction. And then if you put the cursor right over the G2347, it then shows you the, you know, the Hebrew word for affliction, which is the lip cis which means pressure is either literal or figuratively afflicted or affliction, anguish, burden, persecution, tribulation, trouble. So for me, that was trouble. I don't have the 
level of affliction as some of our brethren do in other parts of the, of the world to where they're persecuted or they're afflicted based off of them believing the God who created the heavens and the earth. Their affliction is different from mine, though we all handle some sort of affliction or trouble. Me having this experience myself and having children, when I see another mom and I go out and, and I see her with her children, I can relate. I feel her, I know where she's coming, or even a dad, and I see him, he's going through what he's going through. I can relate, and I can come and show, show them comfort because I've experienced it. And I am comforted in my afflictions and you as well. That's one of the three things of why we faint not. Our afflictions are but for a moment. And second, though our outward man perish, our inner man is renewed daily. Even when you don't feel like, oh, maybe I'm not praying enough, I'm not reading enough in my Bible, your inner man is still being renewed day by day. Because with Jesus being our author and finisher of our salvation, let me look that up. Okay, so from the book of Hebrews, and we're, we're taking this out of a fuller contextual degree. So I would advise actually reading through um, the whole chapter to get the full picture. For this principle and moment, I'm just showing you what popped up in my mind um, as far as me letting y'all know that Jesus is our author. So Hebrews chapter 12, verse two, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I was saying salvation, okay. So of our faith, who? For the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So Jesus himself, he his affliction was at a greater level than what we're going through now, you know, as people. Him having to endure, absorb the sins of mankind and then having the wrath of God being placed on him, that judgment being placed on him instead of it being put on us, that is a greater affliction than anything that we face now. So with what Jesus has been through and conquered and has risen from, he now, or he is he's able he is available to give us the comfort that we need to make it through. He renews our inner man day by day, even if we don't feel like that's, that's happening. He is the author and finisher of our faith. That's number two. Last but not least, number three, all things are for your sakes. So each of these three um, reasons why we faint not I really got it from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and um, kind of, I think, another chapter too. But anyways, I will read the full verse to you at the end so that you can see you know, where I was going with this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15, which states, For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might, through the thanksgiving of many, redound to the glory of God. So all that you are going through, it is for your benefit. The trying of your faith is far more precious than gold. And I may be paraphrasing that. Uh, so let's let's look up that. First Peter chapter one verse seven. This is what came to mind. And this is the actual verse that the trial of your faith being much more precious, precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. And it has much more to say as well. 
with any of these verses, it is wise to read everything in its context. The purpose of me showing you these scriptures is not to cherry pick, but to kind of walk you through as far as what pops up in my mind, as far as how everything really correlates with each other. Nothing, God's word doesn't contradict. It doesn't say one thing and then deny it somewhere else. Everything is connected. And it's just as important to read in context and to do word studies and to see exactly, okay, who, who is the author um, inspired by God for this particular book and who are they speaking to, et cetera. Like what time zone are they in? Like right now we're in the, the church age. The age of grace has always been from the beginning to the end. So, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. So, yeah, so now to backtrack and to just show you and read to you 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses, we'll just go back to it, 15. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God and redound in the strong means to super abound in quantity or quality be in excess be superfluous also to call super abound or excel make more abound have more abundance it's a good word, okay? So again, for all things are for your sakes that the abundant grace might, through the thanksgiving of many, redound to the glory of God. Verse 16, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. It's verse 17, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. All right, for like a practical tip or just something for you to look at, uh, I will read from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. And our sufferings as people aren't at the extremities of what Jesus had to endure. Though, even though we suffer because you believe in once saved, always saved, because you believe that Jesus Christ is your savior and other people mock that, just know that the comfort of God is there for you as well and that abounds. So, yeah, just being aware of Christ's comfort will help you when it comes to Whatever trial you're facing, big or small, he is there. He is our burden bearer. He bore the weight of our sins. And he is our high priest. So with that being said, if you have any questions, you can comment down below. And if you have any testimonials as well of a recent trial you went through, that you've also been comforted in and brought out of. Feel free to share that as well. I'll see you all next time. Thank you for listening.